Hi again, this is Andy K for GKP, and welcome back to the Ham Whisper and lesson 31 in the general class Operator Element 3 exam course. In this lesson, we cover the G9B section of questions from the question pool. The G9B section of questions simply covers basic antennas. All right, let's get started. What is one disadvantage of a directly fed random wire antenna? The answer is you may experience RF burns when touching metal objects in your station. Now there's several disadvantages to a random wire antenna. However, the one they're looking for for this question is that you may experience RF burns um, by just touching some of the metal pieces of your station. Now the reason for this is more or less proximity of the antenna to the transmitter. Now a, a random wire antenna is simply a wire at a random length and an antenna tuner is needed to match the antenna to the frequency you want to transmit on. Now a random wire antenna attaches directly to the transmitter so there's no feed line associated with it. Because of the extreme closeness of the antenna to your transmitter and the metal objects around your transmitter, some of the RF that is getting transmitted by the antenna is going to get picked up by some of the metal objects around your shack. So you can get RF burns if you touch a metal object that's closely in, in close proximity to the, the random wire antenna. So one of the disadvantages of random wire antenna is a the possibility of RF burns when touching metal objects in your station. What is an advantage of downward sloping radials on a ground plane antenna? The answer is they can be adjusted to bring the feed point impedance closer to 50 ohms. Now vertical antennas need some sort of radials to work properly. And vertical antennas are usually about a quarter wavelength and the radials associated with the vertical antennas are usually about a quarter wavelength as well. And But that depends on the number of radials and how they're positioned relative to the antenna. Now usually there are four, but that can, be, that can vary from as little as one to as many as how many ever you need. But how those radials are positioned will impact the impedance. Now by sloping the radials downward, the impedance can be essentially increased and help tune the antenna. So if there's a mismatch between the impedance of the feed line and the antenna, you can adjust the radials to basically allow uh, a, a impedance match between the feed line and the antenna. What happens to the feed point impedance of a ground plane antenna when its radials are changed from horizontal to downward sloping? Well, the impedance I I increases, and it's the same rationale as the last question. So as the radials of a, of a ground plane antenna are sloped downwards, the impedance increases. What is the low angle azimuthal radiation pattern of an ideal half wavelength dipole antenna installed one half wavelength high and parallel to the earth? The answer is it is a figure eight at right angles to the antenna. So basically what this question is asking is what is the radiation pattern of a dipole antenna essentially in free space even though a half wavelength isn't necessary, necessarily free space. So if you take a dipole antenna and you hang it north to south, so the wires are pointing, nor are pointing north and south, the figure eight or the radiation pattern coming off the antenna are going to point east and west. So on a north and south hanging dipole, the strongest signal at, that's a high, half wavelength above the ground, the strongest signal is going to go east and west. So it's a figure eight at right angles to the antenna. How does antenna height affect the horizontal or azimuthal radiation pattern of a horizontal dipole HF antenna? Now, if the antenna is less than one half wavelength high, the azimuthal pattern is almost omnidirectional. So basically, if it's less than a, a half wavelength above the Earth, you're going to get a good, a decent signal in all directions. And this builds a little bit off the, the last question. The figure eight pattern, a radiation pattern of a dipole, which is placed less than a half wavelength above the ground, becomes a little squashed, making it more circular than figure eight-ish. The result is almost a 360 degree circular radiation pattern and which sends a signal in all directions or omnidirectional. Where should the radial wires of a ground mounted vertical antenna system be placed? The answer is on the surface or buried a few inches below the ground. And it, it's hard to get the radials to slope if the vertical antenna is mounted on the ground, which we talked about in the first couple of questions. However, you want as, well, the point of the question is you want as little interference as possible between the vertical antenna and its radials. So the closest you're going to get is putting the radials on the, the surface of the ground. You can bury them a few inches if you're worried about the lawnmower running over them or 
getting caught, you know, the dog's chewing them up or something along those lines. But uh, you want them on the surface of the ground or just barely under the surface of the ground. So the radial wires of a ground-mounted vertical antenna system should be placed on the surface or buried a few inches below the ground. How does the feed point impedance of a half-wave dipole antenna change as the antenna is lowered from a quarter wavelength above the ground? It steadily decreases. So the, the point to take away from this question is as a dipole's height above ground decreases, so does its impedance. So, which is another thing, way to think of uh, if you need to adjust the impedance of a dipole antenna is if you need to lower it, you can bring it a little bit closer to the ground. How does the feed point impedance of a half wave dipole change as the feed point location is moved from the center toward the ends? The answer to this one is that it steadily increases. And this is talking about how impedance is impacted by where the feed line is actually attached to the antenna. So if you have a half wavelength dipole, the lowest impedance is going to be obtained when the feed line is attached directly in the middle of the dipole. So you have a quarter wavelength of wire on either end of the feed point. Now as the feed point moves to either end of the dipole, so you have more than a quarter wavelength on one side and less than a quarter wavelength of wire on the other side, the impedance is going to increase. So as the feed point of a dipole moves to either end of the dipole, you're going to increase the impedance. Which of the following is an advantage of a horizontally polarized as compared to vertically polarized HF antenna? The answer is lower ground reflection losses. Now the point to take away from this question is that a horizontally polarized antenna and a vertically polarized antenna interact with the earth differently. Now the signal from a horizontally polarized antenna, you can think of a dipole being hung between two trees that is hung parallel to the earth as a horizontally polarized antenna. That the signal can be reflected off the ground and add to the strength of the dipole signal um, or other horizontally polarized antenna. Now a vertically polarized antenna or a quarter wave vertical antenna will have a higher ground reflection loss. So thing to take away with is a horizontally polarized antenna has lower ground reflection losses. What is the approximate length for a half-wave dipole antenna cut for 14.250 megahertz? The answer is 32.8 feet. Now this is technician review, so this should be a pretty easy formula to re-memorize if you need to. The formula for to find the length of a half-wave dipole is that length in feet is equal to 468 divided by frequency that's in megahertz. So for this one, it's going to be 468 divided by 14.250 megahertz which is equal to 32.8 feet. What is the approximate length for a half-wave dipole antenna cut for 3.550 megahertz? The answer for this one is 131.8 feet. You use the same formula that we went over in the last question. Length in feet is equal to 468 divided by the frequency in megahertz. So length in feet is equal to 468 divided by 3.550 megahertz which is equal to 131.8 feet. What is the approximate length for a quarter wave vertical antenna cut for 28.5 megahertz? The answer is 8.2 feet. So the formula to find the length of a quarter wave vertical antenna is length in feet is equal to 234 divided by frequency in megahertz. So for this one, length in feet is 234 divided by 28.5 megahertz, which equals 8.2 feet. Now this is an easy one to remember if you memorize the last formula for the di half wave dipole because a quarter wave vertical is one half the length of a half wave dipole because a quarter wave is a half of a half wave and 234 is one half of 468. So if you can remember 468 and if you remember that a quarter wave antenna is half the length of a half wave antenna, that will help you remember this question or the formula to answer this question. And that's it for the G9B review, and it's time for the G9B quiz. So take out a pencil and a piece of paper and number 1 through 12. When you're done with the quiz, you can check your answers at hamwhisper.com under the exam answers page. You'll find it under the G9B section of questions. And I'm going to go through the questions pretty quick, so if you need more time, simply pause the video and take all the time you need. Now that that's out of the way, let's get started with the quiz. Question 1. 
What is one disadvantage of a directly fed random wire antenna? A, it must be longer than one wavelength. B, you may experience RF burns when touching metal objects in your station. C, it produces only vertically polarized radiation. Or D, it is not effective on higher HF bands. Question two, what is an advantage of downward sloping radials on a ground plane antenna? A, they lower the radiation angle. B, they bring the feed point impedance closer to 300 ohms. C, they increase the radiation angle, or D, they can be adjusted to bring the feed point impedance closer to 50 ohms. Question three, what happens to the feed point impedance of a ground plane antenna when its radials are changed from horizontal to downward sloping? A, it decreases, B, it increases, C, it stays the same, or D, it reaches a maximum at an angle of 45 degrees. Question four, what is the low angle azimuth radiation pattern of an ideal half wavelength dipole antenna installed one half wavelength high and parallel to the earth? A, it is a figure eight at right angles to the antenna. B, it is a figure eight off both ends of the antenna. C, it is a circle equal radiation in all directions. Or D, it has a pair of lobes on one side of the antenna and a single lobe on the other side. Question five, how does antenna height affect the horizontal azimuthal radiation pattern of a horizontal dipole HF antenna. A, if the antenna is too high, the pattern becomes unpredictable. B, antenna height has no effect on the pattern. C, if the antenna is less than one half wavelength high, the azimuthal pattern is almost omnidirectional. Or D, if the antenna is less than one half wavelength high, the radiation off the ends of the wire is eliminated. Question six, where should the radial wires of a ground-mounted vertical antenna system be placed? A, as high as possible above the ground. B, parallel to the antenna element. C, on the surface or buried a few inches below the ground. Or D, at the top of the antenna. Question seven, how does the feed point impedance of a half-wave dipole antenna change as the antenna is lowered from a quarter wave above the ground? A, it steadily increases. B, it steadily decreases. C, it peaks at about one eighth wavelength above the ground, or D, it is unaffected by the height above ground. Question eight, how does the feed point impedance of a half wave dipole change as the feed point location is moved from the center toward the ends? A, it steadily increases. B, it steadily decreases. C, it peaks at about one eighth wavelength from the end, or D, it is unaffected by the location of the feed point. Question nine, which of the following is an advantage of a horizontally polarized as compared to vertically polarized HF antenna? A, lower ground reflection losses, B, lower feed point impedance, C, shorter radials, or D, lower radiation resistance. Question 10, what is the approximate length for a half wave dipole antenna cut for 14.250 megahertz? A, 8.2 feet, B, 16.4 feet, C, 24.8 feet, or D, 32.8 feet. Question 11, what is the approximate length for a half-wave dipole antenna cut for 3.550 megahertz? A, 42.2 feet, B, 84.5 feet, C, 131.8 feet, or D, 263.6 feet? And question 12, what is the approximate length for a quarter wave Vertical antenna cut for 28.5 megahertz. A, 8.2 feet. B, 10.5 feet. C, 16.4 feet. Or D, 21 feet. And that's it for lesson 31 and the G9B quiz. Now, if you don't have the quiz, you can check your answers at hamwhisper.com. You can find them under the exam answers page under the G9B section of questions. And until next time in Lesson 32, this is Andy, KE4GKP, saying 73, and I hope to hear you on there soon.